Ready whenever, yep. So Quan, what um, made you want to get into organic farming? Um, I used to work in an environmental field. A couple of years ago I was a dog. Okay, ready. Hi, thank you for inviting us to Bangkok Permaculture. Uh, my name's Anthony, what is your name? Um, um, just call me Quan. Quan, thank you Quan. This, this is, is a you. brilliant, fantastic place. <laughs> um, so I'll just to ask you a few questions as well. Um, could you tell us what got you into organic farming um, and permaculture? I was kind of a researcher. I, I work in an environmental field. I work as a dive instructor. I, I did lots of underwater survey and kind of research. And one point I'm thinking, um, one day I should have my own farm. And also, again, one time I work on the boat. And when they eat it, I think, where does the food come from? Do they not really cook well? Are they clean enough? Are they hygienic? So that makes me think, okay, the best way to grow my own food, and I think it's time for me to do it, I'm just retired and just do it. So you've always had kind of an interest in, in permaculture and organic farming, yes. rather than using fertilizers, GM crops, and so some, this is just you following your dream. Yes. And you've also done some work for Greenpeace as well. Yeah, I used to be volunteer. Used to be quite an active volunteer, and I still help. Like there was an, an oil oil leak in 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 the group of Thailand. I was helping them collecting sample from underwater. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So when did you actually uh, come to start work on the farm? Actually, three years ago. I came in in August. Yeah, that was a raining season. My my first job was to to trim the mangrove tree. And actually, that was my, my first year. I have no idea about farming at all, just apart from small garden in, in my home back in Bangkok. So so my uncle helped help me do the farm, but we, we kind of, my uncle helped me in a chemical way. We, we were partner for that year, and he, he taught me how to do it, but chemically. It's not what we, I really want to do, but I cannot really say no, so I just go with it, and yeah. Yeah, for the first year. Yes. And then after that, you decided that you'd already uh, wanted to introduce organic farming into your area and use natural fertilizers. And you set out about doing your own <coughs> fertilizers and growing your own crops and went on your own. Yeah, the, the first year is I have learned so much and understand why farmers are so poor. Um, for example, when we buy inputs like fertilizer, spray, even not the water, but we have to buy gasoline to, to pump. We cannot control this price. Mm. It's, it's go up all the time. But to do price, we cannot set up a price up for our produce. The, the buyer set the price, so farmer can never make money. And I realized that, and I, I'm aware that how, how farmers are so poor, and I thought, when I was young, I thought they were so, like, this doesn't make sense, they must be kind of silly. If it doesn't make profit, why they keep doing it? And actually, lots of farmers give up. They work for the industrial sector and only few still doing the job just to, to reserve their land. And, and the chemical farms really des des destroying them. Farmer has never been so poor before the Green Revolution. Now they are the poorest one anyway for every, every country. Yeah, uh, farmers have noticed in uh, Southeast <coughs> Asia as a whole tend to be <coughs> the poorest people, Correct. where back in England they tend to be the landowners, they have a bit more stature, they mm -hmm. have a bit more to do about them, but here they're the hardest working people that you can come across, yet they tend to be the poorest people. Correct. There's the, the price, as I said, is controlled by the middleman, government doesn't really help, <sighs> and if you look at the government, the Ministry of Agriculture is run by one party all the time. I'm not going to mention the name, but all the time one party is running this Ministry of Agriculture. That's why it's never grow. And the, the sad thing is the king has such a very nice project, but people don't really pay much attention. Even the, the World Soil Day, actually our king's birthday, but about one percent of Thai people know that it's the king's soil day is actually their king's birthday. They don't really know what is sufficient economy, what is permaculture. Or see the benefit of natural farming. They just they listen to the media and they just 
don't don't have any faith in natural farming. But actually, I did the farm one year and I totally convinced that chemical is not the way to go. It's only organic. It's only the way to go. And let's say my produce, the let, let's say the the middleman they buy at the beginning of season they buy me. They can give me two hundred baht per kilogram of mango steam. and we have to keep supplying them. And, th and if we stop, they will no never buy us again. So we have to keep supplying them. At the beginning, it was good. Each buyer try to keep the high price to to pull the people to their to their place. And when we have really high produce, let's say we have like five baskets or twenty baskets like this, they will dump price down to five baht per kilogram, from two hundred baht to five baht per kilogram. That's a big drop. And we cannot sell to any other shop because they will refuse because we didn't supply them at the beginning. Mm. So that's, that's how they uh, monopolize the industry. Yeah, that's really a shame. Mm. So, <clears throat> so I just told myself, okay, now I'm gonna sell as my organic product. The leftover will be donated, and I'm happy this way. I can make more money, and I can do good thing for the society. Yeah. So the name of your project here is Bangkok Permaculture. Yeah. Uh, but you are actually based in Trap. Correct. Okay. Um, so you actually, you, you also, <coughs> you travel a few times a week sometimes up mm -hmm. to Bangkok and they have a farmer's market. Right. Uh, okay, so is uh, the farmer's market, is that actually all organic as well? Uh, they're mostly organic farmer in that. There, there are some hydroponic, which is not organic, but still better than the chemical yeah. one. And for my farm name, it's kind of funny. The reason why, uh, because in, in some country when they buy mangosteen, the name is uh, Bangkok mangosteen. Actually, there's no mangosteen in Bangkok. So I think if you have my name, Trot mangosteen, nobody will know what it is. So maybe something with Bangkok. And also, my farm is really in the countryside. No post will come to my farm. So everything will have to go to my Bangkok address. And another reason, I was thinking about chocolate. You have sweet chocolate or French chocolate, but no cocoa tree growing there. So I just have my name Bangkok from a culture. That's it. Yeah. Is that a, a bee? It's kind of a bee, but more like a wasp. Just think my hand this morning. And off it goes. Yeah. And so as, as I've been looking uh, before I actually came down to the farm, um, I've noticed that there is more and more organic farms, more than I expected. Is it seem to be a growing trend now? It's growing. There are there are couple learning center in Thailand. So if you search on Google, you type Agronature Thailand," you can see a learning center in Chumri. There, they have a couple dozen branches all over the country, and they, they teach a farmer. Not only farmer, like the city people would like to to quit the city life and start their farm. So they teach people how to do natural farming, how to be self-sufficient. For example, teach you how to make your own charcoal, make your soap, make your shampoo, um, how to um, kind of herbal traditional medicine, thing like that. How to make compost, the liquid one and the solid one. Yeah. So it really teach people to be reliant, to be to have a real freedom. Yeah, and make the wrong choices. Correct. Yeah. Um, as you said before earlier, um, a lot of people that are using these pesticides, uh, th their farms tend to be failing, mm -hmm. and there's no way for them to ever recover when once it reaches rock bottom. The only way to recover is if they actually took something on board and began did a course and looked into it and used permaculture, organic farming, and did what you did. Um, as you explained, um, you've gone from growing six ton of mangosteen on the farm in a year to sixteen ton on yeah. the organic. That is a big difference. It was a shock. Like the, the that year, I, I guess six ton as a chemical farmer. I don't know. I I make. I can tell you my my earning. I got that year thirty thousand profit from working one year. So that's really nothing. Can't even no. afford my own food. So I. I lost most of my money, and I thought, okay, if it have this again this year, I have to give up. I cannot afford this anymore. This farm is really too big for me, and and uh, the industry really killed me. I almost gave up, and <coughs> but I I think okay, if I can recover from this, any farmer could recover. So okay, I go organic, and 
my even my worker when we pay them we pay them not per per hour we pay them per amount of hours thing they get let's say three to four bars per hour. So they they worry that if they have less work they would get less work. So they they kind of break them. Yeah. And and when the HR saw the problem come, hey hey come and have a look at this guy. Yeah. And he was talking from the beginning and then so the harvesting is really, really suffering. That one day we got one ton. In a day. Yeah, one ton. So Full truck of this, so we have three baskets there. Yes. So three sets of basket, how many tons? So twenty ton basket, two tons. Yes. One ton. So oh so like you said you don't pay them by the day or by the hour, you pay pay them by work. So that gives them some incentive to work as well. It is. Yeah. So obviously everything's not always perfect. Um, and you are just starting out and you are doing some selling as well. Have you had anything fail? Oh yeah, many. <laughs> Well, like you're part of permaculture and you're part of exploring different avenues, but some things have uh, turned out good. Uh -huh. But um, yeah, please explain, you know, the situations that aren't always good. Okay, I I think you may heard the, the book named One Straw Revolution. Yes. So written by a Japanese master, Fukuoka, and it was so inspiring. And I, I read about the, the rice growing. Okay, I'm going to grow rice on my own farm. I have family of land. So I do. The, the book describes the, the bullet technique. He put the rice in a kind of bullet clay, like yeah. like this, and then to store it. He said the, the clay will protect the rice from being eaten by insects. Ah! Yeah, de definitely. That la last year. No, no. The first Three, two, one. So we've heard about the good points. We've heard that you've gone from growing so much per year to mm -hmm. an X amount per year and how everything has changed over a certain amount of time. You're obviously doing a lot of experiments here. You have only just gone to organic, you started off, uh, you've only been here a few years. Mm -hmm. uh, and as anyone who's going to experiment and test on their own land, mm -hmm. you, uh, have you had any failings? Many. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the first one was my rice study field. I think most organic farmers read the book on the heard about One Straw Revolution yes. by a Japanese master. And he mentioned about how to make a rice bullet. He put rice in, in, a, in a clay like, like this. So he said the clay will protect the rice from, from the insect. And well, so I did the same thing. It me ages. So I make a couple thousand <laughs> bullets of rice. It me like forever. And then sowing it. Next day, I, next day I came to, to the field to check. It's all gone. All gone. Oh, all that time one night. Yeah. Oh. So I realized that thing that work in one country may not work in the other country. Because yeah. in Thailand, we have lots more insects, lots more worms compared to Japan. So we have to really um, experiment, yeah. see which works and which doesn't work. That's important. Also, my kitchen garden, two years ago, I made one a bit far from home, but that one get water from, from the pump. It failed because I cannot really do the weeding job. and cannot really control the insect, so it's just too far, it doesn't Good, work. Yeah. And it didn't, simply didn't get enough attention. And second year I make it next to the house very close, but I'm not a pipe guy, I'm such a, I was a city boy at my background, so I'm terrible in piping. So the pressure of water is not enough, that one thing. And also I still believe in dialect seedling. I sow the seeds, I, I get seeds from good source, really good source, and I ruin them all. So just feel so wise, very few. And then that year we had a good deal of we have really high yield of mango seed, so it was too busy to do the weeding, so all the vegetables died. All of them. Yeah. Yeah. I almost gave up, I feel like an idiot. Mm. I, I saw many farmers in the market when they go like buying things like wow these people they don't even have high education, they can grow lots of vegetables. But look at me, I'm just like an idiot. So I fell so, so down, and this year I made it finally. Yes. So you, this year has been the first year that you've seen some improvement, your experiments have been working. Yeah. And it's give you the enthusiasm to push right. further and keep going. Correct. So much enthusiasm, and the experience actually makes me stronger. If we fail again, it doesn't matter. I, l I learned a new lesson, so I have to really accept the mistake of failure. It just makes me smarter and stronger. 
and I can when I talk to other people who want to do this, when they came up, I can tell them, hey, look, I failed so many times more than you. Why, why are you giving up? Yeah. 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 Keep going. Keep pushing on. This time work. Yeah. Thank you very much, and thank you for your time. You're welcome. Okay, thank you. Thank you.